Some of you want to learn how to walk like an Egyptian. Today we're going to teach you how to stagger like an Egyptian as we teach you how to make ancient Egyptian beer. A mainstay of the Egyptian diet was beer. Unlike what we find in other cultures where beer was strictly a nutritional supplement, Egyptian craftsmen had a rich diet in fish, meat, knucklebone soup, bread based on emmer wheat, and wine. Yet, the Egyptians still drank beer. As explained in a previous video, the Egyptians made beer from barley loaves that were previously used as offerings to the gods. In this video, we are going to go through the process of making Egyptian beer. Much of the reason that the Egyptians made beer was because the water in the Nile was appallingly bad. Herodotus might have called Egypt the Nile's gift, but the Nile itself was no pleasant package. While the Nile was the primary source of water for Egypt, it was also East Africa's toilet that got flushed once a year. The water was teeming with deadly bacteria, viruses, parasites, sewage, and corpses. By the way, never swim in the Nile. That is just a one-way trip to the hospital. Don't do it. And while growing up in Egypt gave a local some immunity to those diseases, nothing can protect you completely from what the Nile can dish out. And this was quickly recognized as people noticed that they were healthier when they drank from wells instead of the river. And even more so as people started drinking beer instead of well water. So let's go through the process of making Egyptian beer. And please obey your local liquor laws. Making beer is not legal in every jurisdiction or in every country. So if you're going to try this at home, please do it in compliance with the local laws. So we're going to go through the entire 10 step process of making Egyptian beer. And we're going to end this video with a tasting. And Egyptian style beer starts with barley offering loaves. And as you can see in the video here, I've got a nice little display of four offering loaves and we are going to use this to make beer. So, uh, as this is beer, we're not going to do it strictly the Egyptian way. We are going to do something such as sanitation, which is very important for beer. I'm going to make sure everything is nice and clean before I bottle and ferment this. And I'll let you know where I deviate from normal Egyptian practice. For example, I'm not about to use filthy Nile water in the beer. I'm going to use clean, modern, chlorinated water, which we will dechlorinate, but it will be sanitized before it actually hits the beer. So, here we're going to begin, and the first step is to make your offering loaves, which we have already done. We have got here a pot of water with three liters of water, which I have dechlorinated. Now, while I have stressed sanitation with making beer, I think it's also important to note that for the ancient Egyptians, making beer was water sanitation. It was one of the few instances where a liquid was brought to a temperature that sterilized much of what was in the, what was in the river. Now, just a small travel tip, if you go to Egypt, you'll see a lot of public faucets that the people do drink out of. It is highly recommended that as a foreigner, you don't drink out of those. They will make you very, very sick. The one exception to this, however, 
is when tea is made using this water. As tea water, the water from those faucets is safe. However, that is because it has been boiled to make tea. In ancient times, water was boiled through the process of making beer. So, in many respects, not beer was not just a means of imbibing calories through the reduction of barley as grain. It was also a way to sterilize their water, purify their water, to make it appropriate for drinking. So that's the process we're sort of going through here, is essentially how the ancient Egyptians purified their water to make it safe. So again, what we have here is three liters of water, and we're just heating it up to 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, our water is now at temperature, and the next step is to take our sacrificial loaves of barley there and crumble them up into the water. Try to do this one-handed while I hold a camera and just, you know, you just take them and just crumble them up and you stick them in. Now, if I had wanted to be a little more thorough about this, I would have probably used, say, a millstone or food processor to break up the barley a little more, but with the length we're going to be brewing this, it really doesn't matter. The process of heating it and brewing it will, will more than reduce the, re extract the uh, starch from the grains. So now that we've got our sacrificial loaves, or offering loaves, in the water, we're just going to stir it and essentially brew it at about 55 degrees for roughly 45 minutes. And we will come back when that process is done. And through the magic of television, an hour has gone by. Also, for the sake of disclosure, I wanted to let you all know that I actually, off camera, doubled the amount of offering loaves. So there are eight offering loaves in here, not just four. So we've let this brew at 55 degrees for one hour, mostly because I was off editing another video. And we're back, and now we're going to raise the temperature to 62 degrees and let it brew for another hour. And the reason we do that is the first brew was to activate the alpha amylase, which is, happens to be in the malted barley. That converts the starches to short sugars. But there's a second enzyme in malted barley as well called beta amylase that breaks down some of the more complex starches. And that's what we're doing with this next phase is breaking down that second set. So as you can see, you can see it's pretty soupy and there's a lot of still mostly whole grains in there and that's okay. You know, those will, those will get converted. So we're going to let this cook for another hour and then we will come back and continue our process of brewing Egyptian beer. Now we have let the wort cook at 62 degrees for an hour and what we're going to do right now is we are going to take a specific gravity reader reading. I have right beside here the pot a cylinder and a beer and wine hydrometer. And what this does is it measures the amount of sugar in a solution. 
the density, essentially, of the liquid. And that'll tell us how many fermentable sugars we have. So what we'll do is we will take a, a sterilized turkey baster and essentially fill the, fill the cylinder and take a reading. Because unlike the Egyptians, I don't do this every day. So I don't know exactly the right amounts of grains and cooking time and all that. And frankly, they didn't leave us those details. So we were guessing at some of this. So what I'm going to do is take that reading in lieu of having the experience of making this beer every day, and we'll see what it get, tells us. I took the hydrometer reading, and it came out to 1.004, which is actually not very much in the way of sugars. So either this grain didn't malt correctly, it wasn't malted correctly, which is a possibility, or the offering loaves were cooked at too high a temperature, also possible. But this wasn't actually unknown either in Egypt, either as far as not having enough available sugars in a beer batch to make a good fermentable beer. Fortunately, the Egyptians had a solution to this, which was to add dates. Dates as a sugar source was used commonly in beer, so this is an authentic Egyptian ingredient that is added to beer to make it more beer-like. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some dates to the wort here, and then we're going to bring it to a boil. And then we're going to add the spices. I will come back as soon as we're ready to add the spices. We added about two cups of dates to the wort, and that left us with a specific gravity of about 1.050. So that's pretty good. That's, that's sort of the range we want. 1.20 to 1.060. So that should give us a good, solid, robust beer. And right now, it has been boiling for about 10 minutes. And in another 5 minutes, we're going to be adding spices for flavoring. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the spices. We want to try to use authentic ancient Egyptian spices. We don't have a huge variety of ancient Egyptian spices at our disposal. And Frankly, they didn't have that many either, but there were some. And the common ones that we, that I think would make a good beer are presented on the plate here. Now, the one that's sort of debatable is the bay leaf. The bay leaf is one of those odd oddballs. It actually comes from the Greek islands. And the Egyptians probably used bay leaf as well since they had trade with the Greek islands. However, there's no recorded use of bay leaf, so we can't really vouch that it's an authentic Egyptian spice. So right now, we're just going to get rid of it. That leaves us with the remaining five here. We've got some green cardamom pods. That's an authentic Egyptian, ancient Egyptian spice. We then have some cumin. And rosemary. Coriander. And this last one. Now, the, for this last one, this one's kind of a controversial one. This is, this should be cassia. I'm going to be using cinnamon because it is almost identical. Now, there is some controversy over whether or not the Egyptians had cinnamon. It's my understanding that they didn't. And that is because it was, cinnamon is not native to Egypt or Eastern Africa. However, they did have cassia 
which is incredibly close. In fact, it is so close that many people can't tell the two apart. So if you're doing this recipe, there's no reason why, if you only have cinnamon, you, can, you, you can't use that instead of cassia. But if you do have cassia, use that because it is the authentic Egyptian spice. So those are our, our five spices that we're going to use. We're going to use, for the solid spices, we're going to use a tea ball. For the powders, we just can't use a tea ball, so we'll just have to throw it in there and hope for the best. So in about five minutes, we will be throwing the spices in, letting the wort boil for another 15 minutes, and then we'll be filtering it out. We're at the last stages of this process. We've boiled the wort for a half hour. We put the spices in for the last 15 minutes. And then what we did was we took it, removed the spices, and strained out all the, all the grain, all the pulp from the dates. And all we're left with now is just the liquid wort. That's all we have left in here. And it tastes sweet. It's got the hint of date in it. Specific gravity reading is about 1.050, maybe a little lower because of the viscosity here. It may be throwing off the reading a bit, but it's pretty much where we want it on target. Now we've got two two-liter containers here, which we're going to be used for as fermentation vessels. And what we're going to do before we put the wort in the fermentation vessels is we're going to put in about a half table or a half teaspoon each of baker's yeast. Now, why baker's yeast? The matter of baker's of yeast. Now, I do have brewer's yeast here at home. But why am I not using it for the Egyptian beer? And the reason comes down to history and pedigree. The fact is the varieties of yeast are almost as diverse as say the breeds of dogs. Some dogs are small, some dogs are big, some are greyhounds and run very fast. Each breed has its own particular attributes, and yeast is no different in that regard. What the Egyptians used was essentially the same yeast that they used in their baking, so bread yeast. So it makes sense for us to use bread yeast as well. The fact is that if we did use brewer's yeast, it would change the character of the beer, I think, in a very substantial way and give it flavors that we shouldn't expect or wouldn't expect from an Egyptian beer. So we're trying here to get something that's relatively close. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I'm going to put in the yeast, I'm going to bottle up the bottles, and then I'm going to cap it off with a couple of airlocks and then show it and wrap this up. Well, there they are. The two uh, fermentation containers con uh, holding our Egyptian beer. After I put in the yeast and the wort, I topped it off with a little water, took a final gravity reading of 1.036. So should we come out to be a really nice beer, put a couple airlocks on it, and now it's just sit and wait and let them ferment until they're done. And what we'll do is we'll then resume this video when the beer is ready to taste and we'll have a tasting. Well, here it is, our Egyptian beer. Now, unlike modern beer, it's flat. There's no carbonation in Egyptian beer. The final specific gravity of this was 1.000. Our beginning specific gravity was 1.036. So that means that this beer has about a 4.6% absolute alcohol by volume. So it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable beer. It's a little cloudy. It's got a nice mellow yellow color. And we're going to give it a taste now. It 
It's a little sour. I don't taste the spices. There's not much in the way of spices. It probably could use more spices. Uh, spices are a, a strange thing anyway, because spices tend to either be too much or too little. So I think on this one it went too little. Yeah, there's, there's no, no taste of spices in this. It's a little like lemonade. It tastes a little like lemonade. Now, given the choice between dysentery and cholera and drinking this beer, oh, there's no, there's no, no question. There's no choice. It's not unpleasant. It's not, unpleasant. It's not what you would expect it's not a beer. Pleasant. You could get used to this. If if this was if this was your primary drink, you could drink it on a daily basis. It's a lot like a tea. Yeah. Yeah. Now there does there is a touch of vinegar in here. Uh and that's because we intentionally put a touch of vinegar to raise the pH slightly so it wouldn't spoil. Now in ancient Egypt Ancient Egypt has a lot of flies. So that bacteria would naturally develop in, in an Egyptian setting. In our case, we would have to add it to make it more like the Egyptian style. But drinking vinegars were also a common feature of the ancient Near East, which we may get into into another episode. But this is not unpleasant. This is actually pretty good. Now, I racked a second one of these. Out of curiosity, I decided to carbonate one version of the Egyptian beer to see if it stands up nicely to carbonation. Can this recipe be adapted for modern tastes? So, what I did was I took half of the brew which, by the way, we, it took four days to ferment the, uh, the beer, so it actually is a pretty fast fermenting beer, too, which was really interesting all by itself. And, again, the clarity is about the same as the other beer, but it did hold carbonation and held it pretty well. Now I'm going to taste it. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. Carbonation adds a lot to ancient Egyptian beer. Yep, carbonation actually makes it really nice. It's still got that lemony flavor. But there's a effervescence, a sparklingness. Um, it really brings out more of the fruity notes. It makes it more citrusy. Uh... It is, it is definitely improvement to carbonate the, the Egyptian beer. And it is very, very nice. By the way, I still have to film three videos. So uh, this is going to be very interesting after drinking all this Egyptian beer. So uh, I should probably wrap up this video so I don't get too toasted. But yes, the carbonation makes Egyptian beer very, very nice. It's, it's like, it's almost a bit like a rice beer. It's almost a bit like a rice beer, as I said. It's got that acidity. It's got that, the fruity notes, the lemon flavors. You do get a hint of the dates. A little hint of the dates. But it's not strong. Yeah. It's not strong at all. Well, that was our tasting on ancient Egyptian beer. We hope you enjoyed learning about the process of making Egyptian beer. We're going to include the recipe in the description. If you try this at home, please leave a comment and let us know how it turned out for you or if you made any changes that improved it also would like to know that too. And if you enjoy this channel and wish to help us out, please hit that subscribe button 
Your subscription matters and it really helps. Thank you for watching. See you again next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.